Hello, welcome to Skyber Hacks. Today I want to talk about shell programming and unit testing. It's something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I talked about it a lot to friends and colleagues, but this is the first time I'm recording it. So, unit testing. So, I will talk about why you should unit test, and I suspect you are already unit testing in other languages, but you're not yet doing it in Bash. And um, I'll go through how to make your bash code unit testable and how to use library. Um, not to like me, I wrote my own library and then I discovered someone had done it a lot better out there. And then, of course, we'll go through and write some unit tests and see how it all works together. So, first off, why unit tests? There are lots of talks and articles on this, but one argument is you do it absolutely everywhere else, right? You do it for Java, your C Sharp code, your C++, your Python, your TypeScript, everything. Everything has a culture for you doing unit testing, except for shell programming. For some reason, this production dependent code uh, is not unit tested around, and I absolutely don't understand it. I think it's just a part of how you think about unit testing or, or shell scripting. So um, that's also why I say shell programming and not shell scripting to try to make you think similarly about bash programming as you would do for, say, Java. So one reason, another reason for doing unit testing is so you don't have to test in production. You have fewer surprises. You can refactor your code, shuffle it around with greater confidence, and of course. <laughs> It feels good. You know, you can stay within your editor and you can write code and you can test your code and you can write code and you can test your code so you get a lot faster feedback loop than testing your your command out either on a subset of data or interaction. So the first stop is to make your bash code unit testable. And the way I do that is that I basically have three directories for every program I work on. So I have a bin directory, foo. So if I have a bash application called foo, I have a bin foo. Then I have a library, foolib. That's like the main library that's specific to the foo app. And then perhaps I have code where I have multiple commands. I have foo, I have bar, and I have as. And then I have then common libraries, common JSON lib, common HTTP lib, and so on. Um, and then I have all my code in a test directory. And then, for instance, foo test. And then I do some common loading a lot of, of modules in my test. So if there's a test called foo test, I automatically work out that should load then dot a dot slash lib and then foo dash lib. Um, but for the example, just in a moment, I will just source it directly. But you can do dynamic lookup so that you always load library corresponding to your test. There is a great library out there called shunit2. I do recommend it. I've written several unit testing libraries myself. Uh, they work, but it's really nice when someone has done everything for you. And uh, this guy has probably thought about more corn cases than you're likely to think about. So let's get unit testing. So here on the left hand side, I have my test. It's an animal test. It doesn't have any test yet. And then on the right hand side, I have library. So this is what I would have then in my lib directory. And then I would have a bin slash animal that just sources to my library and parses the arguments and calls the main method. So let's see, I have, I want to write a test. So for instance, I have, let's say I have a function called iscat, well, right? And um, I want to test that, so I do test iscat here, and I, I would expect the return, so I would like to echo cat and then to is cat and then let's see, and then actual should then be so in case you don't know a dollar question mark that's the return code of the previous command. So here I'm running something called is cat, so that's typically something that you would use like if is cat then echo meow or something, right? Uh, so this is how you normally use this cat, but to test it, you just do this, and then you can do assert equals, I would like that to be a zero, that means try, and then always the actual after Let's try to run that animal test. Um, that didn't run any tests, and the reason for that is that we haven't loaded the S, SH unit 2. 
So we'll do that. We'll do source. Um, I, so what I've done, I've git clone that. So I have that in my current directory. So that's how it finds it. And now it does try to run something. And you can see uh, expect a zero, but what's 107? So I'm getting somewhere. Now I have unit testing framework up and running, and I can run it from my editor, just like you would run your Java code. And you can see here there's a problem on line six. I can hit enter there, and it says uh, is cat is not found. And of course that's because I haven't loaded my animal library. So let's do that. So there is a the sh unit two. It has a me method setup that will be run for execute for each test function. So, uh, for instance, this is corresponding to in JUnit, you will have something called before each. This is similar. Um, so, I want to load the library. And I'll look, there we go. So, now I run my code here, and I run one test, and it worked just fine. There we go. This cat, um, let's add some, it's a false positive, right? It just doesn't do anything, so it will return true no matter what you pass to it. So we can, you know, this cat dog, you know, if you echo dog, that should definitely not be, but that's also, that's also true. So there's definitely something wrong with our method here. Um, and of course, I need to I need to actually check for a cat. So there, now my unit has to swipe. Um, and I'll just yeah. Now, let's say I have a capitalized capitalized cat. You know that should still be a cat. Um, but it fails, right? Just move that one up a little bit. Uh, you can also then pass a uh, card is it card two. You know, if you want to have a message, but when it fails, you can pass that as the first parameter, um, and then you will get a printed out here, just as you're used to with, for instance, JUnit. Um, then of course I can do the ignore case in my implementation that passes as well. Um, you can also then have something called you know get name, and that's define the cat. Um, you know, get cat name test get. Name. And expect it is I don't know, like this, and then use the actual equals cat, cat name, and you can then do your search equals expect it actual. And of course, that fails. So then I can do this name returns like this. That succeed as well. So there you are, there you are. Uh, we have a working uh, unit testing library up and running and we can, uh, what's it called, test, test drive our development just as we would do in real program languages. All right, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. I really hope that um, you're intrigued by this and we'll start uh, trying out unit testing either using SH unit two or writing your own it's basically you only need one function as far you know assert equals, but the uh, SH you know, two library has many many more function um, for for convenience. If you want to delve further, here are a couple of links to the GitHub page at Wikipedia. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.